recognize uh, Professor uh, Dr. Robinson uh, for five minutes to present his testimony. Good morning, Chairman Bouchon, Ranking Member Lipinski, and members of the subcommittee. I'd also like to thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony today on the frontiers in human brain research and the importance of an interdisciplinary and interagency approach to neuroscience. Today, I will use an example from my laboratory's research on honeybees to address the importance of basic research on brain and behavior. It is necessary to understand how healthy brains work in order to find treatments for the many devastating brain disorders that afflict our society. This involves basic research on animal models, the type of science that's championed by the National Science Foundation. From this work, we can generate hypotheses for what changes occur in a dysfunctional system and then test possible interventions for these disorders. If I may have the first image, please. Honeybees are famous for their highly structured division of labor. Some bees take care of the baby bees, while others forage outside for nectar and pollen. In addition to this highly structured organization, there's also a great deal of flexibility. Bees can switch between jobs according to the needs of their colony. This raises the question, how can a brain that's the size of a grass seed produce such complex behavior? What does this say about our brains? To address this question, we developed a couple of new research tools. One is a new system of tracking bees with radio frequency ID tags developed in my laboratory by retired businessman and current citizen scientist Paul Tenzar to help us study behavioral activity. The second tool is a device to study brain activity that comes from genomics, which is the new science that studies the assemblage of, assemblage of all of our genes. We suspected that switching from one job to another might involve reprogramming the bees' brains for the new job. This led us to interdisciplinary research from behavior to genomics with funding from NIH and USDA to sequence the bee genome. We were surprised to find that the way this reprogramming occurs is that the genome actually is very sensitive to the environment and in a very dynamic way. When a bee responds to events in the hive, thousands of genes in the brain change their activity and then the behavior changes. It's as if the genes are blinking on and off like Christmas lights, changing the amount of the brain's proteins that they make. It turns out that in addition to bees, other species, including birds, fish, mice, and humans, also have dynamic genomes in their brain. Last year, I co-chaired a special meeting of the National Academy of Sciences and the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research to explore the human health implications of this discovery of the dynamic genome. The conference imagined a new interdisciplinary collaboration among psychologists, sociologists, political scientists, neuroscientists, and geneticists to understand how the experiences of childhood adversity affect the brain and predispose for certain types of brain disorders. The lesson here is that an insight from basic animal research is helping to address a critical question in human health. It will take the integration of a variety of types of research on both animals and humans to reach a complete answer, including research funded by the NSF Directorate for Biological Sciences and the NSF Directorate for Social, Behavioral, and Economic Sciences. The Brain Initiative similarly needs to commit to an effective blend of basic and applied research to provide more opportunity for transformative discoveries. The bee story also illustrates that some animals are ideally suited for the pursuit of very specific questions, sometimes even better than the traditional workhorses of the laboratory, the fruit fly or the mouse. Neuroscientists actually have known this for a long time. The humble squid essentially la launched the modern era of neuroscience because its nerve cells are so big that their activity could be studied even with the primitive techniques of the 1940s. The research undertaken as part of the Brain Initiative should likewise benefit from a broad research agenda of model animals and model behaviors. Understanding how the brain works represents a formidable challenge to our collective ingenuity and dedication. With this challenge comes a great opportunity to increase our understanding of brain and behavior to improve our health and the functioning of our society. We must remember that basic science research is called basic not because it's simple, but because it provides the foundation for innovation. 
through the united and creative efforts of biologists, mathematicians, engineers, physicians, and other explorers of the brain, big brains or little brains, we must and we will find the answers that we need. Thank you.